Hello my friend and welcome to my channel. Today I've got You Are Sugar Thermal Extension Gel. I started with Prep and Clean and Acid Free Primer and now I'm going to go in with this Cody base, rubber based coat. It is a gel like product that you have to cure under the LED lamp. So I'm going to just go in and apply one thin layer of this. It's just a really nice rubberized base coat. I'm going to cure it under my 48 watt lamp for 60 seconds. And now I'm going to fiddle with this uh, paper nail form. <laughs> this is the tricky part for me. And it would figure that the one that I do on camera is the one that gives me the most trouble. I am still fairly new at messing with these, so uh, that they don't always just work out perfect. I've already done the rest of my nails, and with this one being thermal, you can kind of see it changing color on my other nails that are already done. So I'm just trying to get this rascal on here. And I have watched a bunch of videos, and you know, it's always easier as seen on TV than in real life sometimes. So I decided I was going to go ahead and do this one like I did the other one using the nail form. I had pulled out my poppets to do it like that because of the thick consistency. But I wouldn't have any, any luck with that. So I just went back to this. And I'm going to use that You Are Sugar um, Slip Solution. i got a big old blob of that gel on my nail. And now we're going to work it into a, a nail. Got to clean off the tip of my spatula. It was all sticky. And I wet my brush, but I always dab it on a paper towel because you don't want it too wet. You just want the brush barely wet enough to keep it from sticking to the product. And when you notice it start getting sticky, you just reload and tap it on the paper towel again. This one is a very thick. The white one that I've used from the UR Sugar was definitely not as thick as this one. This one almost feels more like a poly gel, but it's not. It's just total gel. And I do love these products. I love that you can keep messing with them and moving them around and everything until you cure it. Like with acrylic, you don't get that kind of time. You've got to hurry up and do what you're doing. I am so not ready for acrylic yet. And I... I'm not like going to leave these on my nails for a long time. I just wanted to, you know, use the thermal one and, you know, give it a try and see how that goes. See what it looks like. I can tell you that in the end, um, since I'm not really great at doing these yet, um, that it, the product is thicker in some spots than others. So when it does change thermal change, colors, it, it, especially when it's in, in the in-between stage, it looks kind of crazy. It just kind of looks like I've got a sick mani going on. I really did like this though, and like I've said before, I don't plan on ever being a gel person or wearing gels all the time or anything like that, because I change my manicures out so often that I like the ease of getting regular polish off my nails quickly so I can do another manicure. But I do really like products like this in case you do have, you know, a handful of beautiful nails and you break one, then you've got options. And that's why I'm showing these sorts of things on my channel. So I need another bead of this gel because I just did not have enough. And you kind of got to scrape it off under the nail. It is thick, real thick. And then you just work it, pat it, and mush it down. And I probably would do better with a gel brush, but I don't have one of those just yet. So I'm just making do with what I do have. Pushing that product around. Now, out of all the nails that I did, I did all five of them on this hand. This one turned out the funkiest looking out of all of them. <laughs> And like I said, that would figure since this is the one I decided to record. But I wanted to just show you how you can do it. This is this is something that takes a lot of practice. And if you watch some of the other YouTube channels out there, 
you'll see they've they've mastered the art of this and it's because they've spent a lot of time doing it I do feel more comfortable the more I do it if that helps any of you out there that are thinking about doing this or are just starting to mess with it it's um, a really neat way of making an extension I personally just I, like I said, I'm just personally glad that there are products like this out there instead of having to use, you know, like a glue on fake nail. I like this because I think you can shape them into more of a natural looking nail. And that's just because I'm a natural nail person, not dissing on anybody that likes, you know, extensions that use the, you know, the, the glue on ones. That's that's to each their own is what I'm saying. And you can see that thing is changing color all kind of crazy. It's like pink up on my natural nail. I did cure that one again for another 60 seconds. So now I'm going to go in and start doing my filing. And I like to do my sides first. And I, I wish I'd had a thinner file so that I could have gone, laid my file like flat up against the nail coming from the natural nail to the extension. But I just couldn't be bothered to have to go try to find one. <laughs> So I'm going to do my sides first, and I do have my fan on this time. It is running, I'm trying my dust collector, and I had to get this because I already have trouble with my allergies, so playing with any kind of product like this with a lot of filing, I have to have something catching that dust. I can't run the risk of getting even more sick. So I am going to break out my little, I would like to call it a Dremel tool, but it's an e-file, uh, and just smooth this out just a little bit with the e-file because it's really fast very effective but I am going to go back in and do some more work with a regular file too just a regular old buffing file and I'm not very efficient with this e-file yet I'm still learning how to use it as well so I have reversed the rotation on this so that it goes the other way this was part of the trouble I was having when I first got it was I didn't know which position to have it on when I was working on my nail. Because when you work one way, you do one thing, and when you work the other way, you do another. Now, this one little bit, it came in the set that came with it. I really like this one because I can get up in the sides of my cuticle area right here and thin that out and clean that up. Now I want you to see, we've got a whoopsie right there. Something wasn't sticking, it was lifting. So when I ran across it with the drill, it just like snatched it right on up. But I'm glad it happened because then that way I can go in and fix it while I'm sitting and doing my nails instead of having a problem later with it. So I'm gonna show you how I fix that little boo-boo over there. And if you go crazy filing like I do, you can see that's a whole little piece right there that popped up. If you go crazy filing like I do, I'm going to show you how you can fix it right after I get through smoothing it out some more. <laughs> this is a Revlon buffing file block. I love it because it's got all the different sides, so many different levels of textured grit on there. You can go through the whole gambit starting with the rough, which is what I'm using now. And then the shape and smooth, which is on the other side, the white side. But I love these files. I get them at Walmart normally. Now I'm going to go in and kind of shape the end. Now I'm telling y'all, this, this process takes a while. And when you get to the last one, you kind of, I don't know, it's you just kind of start losing it. It's like you're tired of filing. So this one, I did not shorten it up enough but so I'm telling on myself I didn't make it as short as the other ones I thought I did until I started putting polish on it which will be my next video I will show y'all some you know polish and nail art I'll show you a full manicure this this video is just all about thermal polish and you can see now that that ring finger is like clear white I mean it's see-through you can very transparent and you can see that pinky's got a little pink on the tip. So I'm going to clean these off with some alcohol and I'm going to go in and do that little patch job I was telling you about. 
I just know that all the time we spend doing our nails, when you run into a situation like this where you've got a boo-boo or an uh-oh, you guys are just like me. Y'all are y'all are running into the same issues. Okay, I can't scoop that up with a brush. I don't know what I was thinking. So I like showing y'all how I overcome these issues and these problems. So I'm just kind of spatuling it down into the little hole I created. And I got to clean that spatula off because it makes me crazy to have that sticky thing waving around all over. And I've gone back in the slip solution and we're going to use this brush and just smooth it out the best we can. Kind of push it down into that hole that was created and brush it all smooth to the best of our abilities. But I do like sharing things like this with you all and I love getting tips back from you. You know, those of you that have used these kind of products and y'all y'all dealt with things. I love hearing stuff like that. So don't stop giving me tips and tricks because I'm all about some tips and tricks. I'm going to go in with my acetone and clean up. You can use alcohol. You can use the slip solution, but I already had this sitting out, so I went ahead and used it. I'm going to cure it again for 60 seconds under my UV LED lamp. And now I'm going to top it off with this Born Pretty Top Coat with this big fat brush on it. I have to scrape a lot of product off that brush because it's just too big, flat, fat and fluffy. It just holds too much. It's a really nice, beautiful, glossy top coat. I'm going to cap my free edge. That keeps it from drawing up when you go to cure it. And now I'm going to clean up the edges real quick before I cure it under that LED UV lamp again. I like to make sure it's real clean. So there we go. We're curing that one for another 60 seconds. And now for some hot water, cold water. we got the ice cubes on the cold water side. And as you can see, what I was talking about earlier, the thickness. I mean, they look fine in the warm state, but in the cold state, they kind of look a little crazy. It's all good, though. They're fun. And for me, this was just a base for a manicure so that I can put some paint on them. So I hope you enjoyed this today. I will leave a link for the UR Sugar stuff down below if you're interested. I want to thank you for watching. And until next time, be good to yourself. Talk to you soon.